The global pandemic that began in early 2020 has had serious impacts on people all around the world. According to the Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center, to date there have been nearly half a billion cases and over 6 million deaths globally. In addition, the various measures put in place by governments meant that many businesses and livelihoods all around the world suffered incredible hardship. However, as we adapted the best we could, our behaviors changed. And this meant that not all businesses suffered. Quite the opposite in some cases, as supermarkets, retailers, and home gym equipment providers saw a major uptick in trade. Another such company that did, did perform strongly through 2020 and 2021 was Amazon. At the time of recording, Amazon shares were trading over $3,200 per share, up from just under $1,900 at the start of 2020. Their most recent 10K was published early Feb, but before showing how their most recent annual figures stack up, it's useful to put them into context. In 1995, they made a loss of $300,000 on just over half a million dollars of revenue. The next few years were tough, and by the year 2000, they had posted a $1.4 billion loss even though revenue was climbing steadily. They began to claw back some ground and began posting profits again. By 2010, they had posted a $1.16 billion profit, all the while whilst revenues were still growing. However, the next few years saw the bottom line back into the red, with a $241 million loss on nearly $89 billion in revenues. From 2014 onwards, this is when things really started to pick up. By 2019, the last full year prior to the pandemic, they made a record $11.6 billion profit on a record $266 billion of revenue. Whilst things had started to pick up just prior to the pandemic, it was nothing as compared to what was to come. In 2020, they saw profits nearly double to $22.9 billion on $386 billion in revenues. And in 2021, profits went up by another 50% to $33.4 billion on a staggering $470 billion in revenue. Outside of Walmart, no company has ever had such sales figures. To quote the great Warren Buffett, buy a stock the way you would buy a house. Understand and like it such that you'd be content to own it in the absence of any market. Understanding the business and what it does is crucial. This dovetails with one of the great accounting academics, Professor Stephen Penman, who notes in his seminal text, Financial Statement Analysis and Security Evaluation, that one does not buy a stock, one buys a business. Now, this video being as short as it is, isn't an overview of financial statement analysis. I'll add links in the description below for some longer videos I have on that. What I'm interested here is, is to delve a bit further into the importance of examining the performance of the operating segments of a company rather than just a PL alone. To do so, I'll use Amazon as an example. But before we do that, let's take a quick detour through IFRS 8 operating segments. Operating segments are defined as a component of an entity. A, that engages in business activities from which it may earn revenues and incur expenses. B, whose operating results are regularly reviewed by the entity's chief operating decision maker. And C, for which discrete financial information is available. Paragraph 11 states that entities are required to separately report information about each operating segment based on certain criteria. And the standard goes on further to say that the reason the entity needs to do so is to enable users of its financial statements to evaluate the nature and financial effects of the business activities in which it engages. Which is a very much more a formal way of saying the same thing that the Oracle of Omaha did. So now we know what operating segments are, what do we learn from Amazon? And before I go on, yes, Amazon doesn't use IFRS, but the overarching idea with ASC 280 is very much the same. Amazon have three operating segments. The first is North America, and this segment primarily consists of amounts earned from retail sales of consumer products and subscriptions through North American focused online and physical stores. The North American segment had a pretty smooth increase in profitability through to 2016, at which point it jumped substantially to just over $7 billion, with a one-year surge in profitability in 2020. The second segment is international, which is much the same as the North American segment, but to customers outside of North America. 
the profitability of the international segment matched North America until 2010. From 2010 until 2017, it struggled to break even. Since 2017, it has been on an upward trajectory with a similar one-off surge in 2020. The third and most recent segment is Amazon Web Services, or AWS. This only became a segment in 2013 and consists of amounts earned from the global sales of, of compute, storage, database, and other services for startups, enterprises, government agencies, and academic institutions. It has been on an absolute tear with profits growing from 673 million in 2013 to over 18.5 billion in 2021. What's even more impressive about the profitability growth of AWS is that since this segment began in 2013, whilst it has only made 214 billion in sales as compared to 1.75 trillion for North America and international combined, it has made a $59 billion profit as compared to 32 billion. This is a 27.6% profit margin as compared to 1.8% over the last nine years. According to Professor Penman, financial statement analysis is a method by which users extract answers to their questions about the firm. And for investors, this is about how to add value to their investment. To do this, accounting numbers are used. Not as a valuation in as of themselves, but as an input into valuation models. Using only Amazon's headline figures would mask the real driver in profitability, namely AWS. So if you're going to try to make sense of what a company is doing and potentially where it's going, it's useful to go digging around in the notes and not just rely on the figures on the face of the statements. It's good to get back into a bit of a rhythm with these and I hope you found this one useful. If you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video and also happy to get suggestions on ideas for future videos. Cheers. Wow.